Today uh, we're learning about uh, body fluids, electrolytes, and the buffer systems uh, involved in the regulation of the pH of the body fluids. So basically there are three things. Uh, the first one deals with the fluids in our body. And where are these fluids found? And how much of these fluids on the average we have in our body? Well, we can divide the body fluids into uh, two components. Uh, one, uh, the fluids found inside of the cell. Those are the intracellular fluids. And uh, the other one are the two fluids found outside of the cell. And these uh, basically are the extracellular fluids. And when we look at the extracellular fluids, uh, one of them is the blood. And uh, the other one is the fluid in between the cells, which is known as the uh, interstitial uh, fluids. The second thing deal with electrolytes. Uh, some of those electrolytes uh, that are important uh, for nerve function, heart function, uh, muscle function are basically uh, sodium, potassium, and calcium. The buffer systems deal with the three types of buffer systems that we have in our body. And the major buffer system is the bicarbonate buffer system. So if we if we look at these and we start with the body fluids, uh, we can ask uh, why is the body fluid important? Well you can uh, look at that in many different ways. One of them is the effect of the body fluid on heart function. So, for example, excess body fluids will increase the cardiac output and that will increase the blood pressure. The other thing you can look at is that excess body fluids are going to influence the function of the cell because it will change the movement of water and the movement of electrolytes in and out of the cell which will influence the normal function of the cell. Buffer systems are important because we have to maintain the pH of the body fluids around pH 7.35 to 7.4. If we increase the pH above that, that will lead to what is known as alkalosis. If we lower the pH of the blood, then that will lead to what is known as acidosis. So the buffer systems basically try to keep a balance between excess hydrogen ions and low hydrogen ions and keep the pH of the blood and the body fluids around 7.4. One of the things that will influence the pH is our breathing. And the reason for it is carbon dioxide will combine with water in the blood and it will form carbonic acid. 
the carbonic acid will generate hydrogen ions. So the more carbon dioxide that we have in the blood, the higher is the level of the hydrogen ions, which means the blood will become acidic. The opposite is true when we have low level of carbon dioxide. So our bicarbonate buffer system will try to compensate for these changes and try to maintain the pH around 7.4. If it's not compensated and the pH remains acidic or alkaline, that is a health risk and it can lead to the death of the person. So, when we look at the body fluids, we need to keep in mind two things. And that is, if we have excess water, that will lead to a condition known as edema. And if we don't have the needed fluids or water, then that will lead to what we know as dehydration. So how does the body regulate the level of water and the level of fluids in our body? Well, we have kidney. We also have hormones. And two of these hormones are the antidiuretic hormone and the aldosterone. Both of these hormones target the kidney. The antidiuretic hormone will retain the water. The aldosterone will retain sodium, which means it will retain water, but it will also use potassium. So it's important to think of our need of fluids because we lose fluids all the time through sweating, urination, defecation, and we need to replace these fluids. In a normal person with normal functioning kidneys, you require what they usually say, eight glasses of water. Now, if you drink too much fluids, and you have kidney misfunction, that could be a risk. But in a normal person, excessive fluid will be removed and the body will regulate the fluid through the kidneys and through the hormones. Of course, if you eat a lot of frozen food, processed food that comes in cans or what have you, they normally contain lots of sodium. And what you have to remember is that the more sodium you have in your diet, the more water that you will retain. And that's why reducing sodium is one of the things they suggest to lower blood pressure because you will lower the cardiac output and that will decrease blood pressure. So the topic of fluids, acid-base balance, and electrolytes is an important topic and we need to understand the basis of how our physiology regulates these three important things in our body, the fluids, the electrolytes, 
in the pH of the blood. 